Now that we know how to make use of large data sets in PyDataLink, let's talk about some considerations to avoid performance issues in our spreadsheets. Under the hood, PyDataLink takes the information entered into the task pane for a given function and creates an AFSDK call. So the more PyDataLink functions you have, the more AFSDK calls must be made to retrieve data. For this reason, it is important to keep in mind how you can minimize calls when building out or modifying large workbooks containing many hundreds of formulas. This lesson will teach you some best practices when troubleshooting why workbooks containing many PyDataLink functions open or recalculate slowly. You will learn how to minimize unnecessary recalculations, quantify the number of calls made by PyDataLink to its data access layer, the AFSDK, and finally, reduce the number of calls necessary by using cell ranges as input and or bulk data retrieval methods. You can find more detailed information on architecture and data flow of PyDataLink in the PyDataLink playbook on the customer portal. We'll go over how to find that in a later lesson. So how can we quantitatively measure the background activity required to recalculate the data link functions in this workbook? Specifically, how do you log the calls that PyDataLink makes to its data access layer, the AFSDK, to retrieve PySystem data? We're going to make use of a tool called AFGetTrace. We'll start by opening Excel. and open a blank workbook. We'll go to File Explorer and go to the PyHome64 folder. Under the AF folder, you'll see the utility called AFGetTrace. We're going to open up Task Manager to find the process ID for Excel. It should be listed under the Details tab, but you can use Select Columns to make sure you see it. We'll find excel.exe and take a note of its process ID. In AFGetTrace, we'll put it into the Enable Whitelist field. Under Keywords, we'll choose Server and Connections, and then we'll press Start. This is going to start recording the activity from the AFSDK from this machine. We'll open our spreadsheet called Performance Exercise. Notice that it's kind of freezing up when we open this sheet. Now that it's open, we'll take a look at what we see in AFGetTrace. As you can see, it logged many calls. And if we take a look, we'll see all those calls recorded in a log file. Let's try something different. Let's go to Excel Options, and under the Formulas tab, we're going to choose Manual Workbook Calculation. Once we do this, we're going to close the spreadsheet we have open, making sure not to close Excel totally. We want to make sure that Excel keeps the same process ID. I'm going to rename the log file and run the trace again. Now let's see the difference when we go to open the same Excel file. As you can see, that opened much quicker. Let's stop the trace, and let's go in and compare what we see for these two options. I'm going to open both log files in Notepad++. As you can see, there's a huge difference in the number of calls AFSDK had to make between the manual and automatic options. We can keep this to only times when it's necessary, rather than when we open, close, or make edits to the workbook. Let's try something else. I'm going to rename the log again this time to update, and start the trace. I'm going to go back into Options and turn back on Automatic Recalculation.
Now we can see the workbook recalculate again. But what if we type in something in cell N3? This is unrelated to the function, but still, as I type it in and delete the value, we can see some lag. Let's stop the trace again. And let's open it up and compare it. This trace is even longer. That's because with automatic recalculation, sometimes any change will trigger a recalculation. We'll talk more about that later.